disasters in the 1990s. And one of the things that's almost always true is that where the disaster occurred had been the most profitable department beforehand. It's hard with all of the stresses and all the pressures and all the problems that you have to solve when something's going well. It's very hard to take off the rose ticket glasses and actually scrutinize it just as heavily as you would something where something's failing. Having worked in banks and having been an investigator in banks, uh, it was interesting to me that these frauds, which seem minor on today's scale, a couple hundred million dollars, um, uh, a trivial amount rounding error. But um, having said that, with the amount of internal and external regulation on a bank, a couple of people managed to embezzle a couple hundred million dollars. So I, I, I found that, at the time, I found that interesting. And those questions we want to ask ourselves as we get into this are what are the incentives in the system for these ethical mishaps. Are there any gray lines here between what's normal political behavior? For example, the president of South Africa doing his utmost to influence the global organization FIFA to select his country. Where is, is there a gray line between he using his political influence and then outright bribery? It's an interesting question. The words we talk about when we talk about values, honesty and integrity are abstract. And so these very deep emotional and personal concerns frequently compete with abstractions. Ethical fading is when you take an issue that most of us in this room would see as an ethical issue and turn it into some other kind of issue, an engineering issue or a commercial issue. And so for the engineers at Volkswagen, how to get the emissions down was an engineering problem. It wasn't an ethical problem. That's called ethical fading. One of the things we'll want to pick up as people who are business executives is not whether or not how the ethical failure happened. That's interesting. It's super interesting. We want to talk about that. But we want to talk about the response. So how do people respond is an ethical dilemma in itself. We often think about structural solutions. We'll put in a function, or we'll put in an officer, or we'll put in a, uh, some sort of governance process, or we'll put in something hard. But in fact, it seems to me, uh, this is a hypothesis, I throw this out to everybody as a question, is can you ever build a good enough mousetrap? Mm -hmm.